Oh, hi, it's me, Jester. Just kidding, it's me, Dinny. And if we were in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, then I would have just cast this guy's self to look like this. But for our realm, I'll show you how you can transform yourself into one of my favorite characters of all time. It's Jester Lavore from Critical Role. Like any other cosplay makeup process, I'm already wearing my contacts. So for Jester, I'm wearing these purple contact lenses. When it comes to body paint, I prefer using water-activated paints and starting with a completely bare face. I just find that the paint sticks to my skin a lot better when I don't have any lotion on it or any sort of primer. And actually, if you noticed my blue ears earlier in the video, it's because I did try using a little bit of moisturizer before putting on the body paint and it just did not look good so I had to take it off and start all over again. But if you need to use primer before applying body paint, you can go do that first and then move on to the painting process that you can see here. I apply the paint with a medium-sized powder brush and I like working in thin layers. I typically use a 1 to 1 ratio of water and paint for my mixture but I add a little bit more paint for the next few layers. After letting it dry, I grab good old baby powder and apply a generous amount over all the painted areas to set all that paint in. Off camera, I also painted my fingers and arms. Moving on to the face, I use dark blue body paint on a small angled brush to paint on eyebrows. Jester has pretty strong eyebrows, so I like to paint them on quite thick and with a slight arch. I also like to do small strokes to mimic hair. Don't forget to also do the same on the other side. Based from the official art illustrated by Ari, I start to put in Jester's features. If you want to see more of the official art by Ari and any other of their works, you can find them at Ornarine on social media. Sorry if I butchered that, but all of the links are in the description below. To contour Jester's features, I like to use cool toned blue shades. Unfortunately, when I first did the nose contour, I grabbed a brush that had some green eyeshadow in it. So please take note of the shades that I use on my cheeks rather than my nose. I fix the one on my nose later. Jester's nose is straight and petite, so I focus the shadows on the bridges of the nose and the tip, while her cheeks are quite defined, so don't be afraid to really get in there with the contour. I also like to put some shadow on the corners of my mouth to prep for the lips later. Don't forget to contour your temples and your jaw as well. Jester has freckles, so using the same body paint we use for our eyebrows, I dot little freckles all over my face using a very thin brush. Use different amounts of pressure when adding your freckles so that you can make different sizes of freckles. That way, it looks a lot more natural. In the official art, Jester's freckles really only sits on her cheeks and nose bridge, but I like to kind of bring it all over the face and marry it all together just because I like freckles that way. This is merely a preference. If you want to be more accurate, you can really just keep the freckles on your cheeks and nose bridge. Lastly, be spontaneous about the placement so it looks more organic. For Jester's eyes, I define the shape using a darker blue eyeshadow. Jester's eyes are almond-shaped and honestly a little cat-like. Luckily, my eyes are already almond-shaped, so I'm really just defining the edges of my eye as well as my crease. Next, I grab an even darker shade of blue and focus that on the very edges of the eye. So that's under the waterline and right at the edge of that crease shadow that we've already put in. The last shade of eyeshadow that we're going to be using is black. So I'm only going to put this on the very outer corner of my lid and into the crease very slowly. I actually like to focus the product at the very edge of the corner and then drag it towards the center. We're also going to put this underneath our lash line, staying as close to the waterline as we possibly can with a very thin brush. This bottom line we're creating will basically be acting as eyeliner, so take your time and be very precise with the application. Moving on to the eyeliner on the upper lid, I like to use a gel liner for this step. I start by drawing the wing and making sure to connect it to the line that we made earlier. I don't like to flick the wing upwards in any way, I like to just connect the line that I made earlier and the one that I'm making now on my upper lash line. I start by drawing this eyeliner very close to my lash line and then I just make it thicker afterwards by applying more layers of gel and slowly working that line outwards. 
I also make sure to define that inner corner very well because in the official art, gestures is very pronounced. So I want to do the same thing to my eyes. Before setting that eyeliner, I pop on some shimmery light blue eyeshadow at the center of my lid. Now, I grab a black eyeshadow on that same thin brush that we used earlier and slowly pack that into the eyeliner that we created. To complete the eye makeup, I want to prep my lashes before applying the false ones. So that means I'm going to curl them and apply a very generous amount of mascara. Don't forget to coat your bottom ones as well. Now I grab a rather thick, wispy set of false lashes and apply that as close to the lash line as possible. Be sure to secure those inner corners as well as the outer ones and then squeeze your two sets of lashes together so that your natural lashes can blend into your false ones. For the lips, I like to use a dark blue liquid lipstick. I would say that the shade is slightly darker than the paint that we use for the eyebrows and freckles. Jester's lips are quite full. So if you have thinner lips, you might want to overdraw them. For me, I actually just followed the natural shape of my lip and then slightly overdraw the cupid's bow just to create a cuter shape to the lip and because her cupid's bow is very defined. It's also important to note that her top lip is thicker than her bottom lip. Since the insides of our mouths are not naturally blue, make sure you get the center of your lip really well with that liquid lipstick because it can get really distracting when you see the pink color show through your blue lips. To add more dimension, I use a light blue liquid lipstick to blot at the center of my lips. Be sure to blend it out and then add more layers if necessary. Also, don't be like me. Make sure that you spot the blue specks on your teeth and take them off before you do any more videos and photos. Dinny, why? There are two more steps to complete the Jester makeup transformation. The first is to put some pink blush on your cheeks and nose bridge. The illustration of Jester in the official art actually doesn't have as much blush or at least is not very heavy handed with it. So you, to be more accurate, you can put it more lightly but I like adding a lot more blush just because I think it suits her personality and it makes her look really cute. And finally, the last step is to add some highlighter for even more dimension. So I'm popping it in the inner corner and I'm really concentrating how I add this in my inner corner just to further define the almond shape that we created for the eyes. I add it on my nose bridge, on the tip of my nose, underneath my eyebrows, and my cheekbones. I'll also be adding it on top of our cupid's bow to further define that. And as you can see, I go a little bit heavy-handed with the highlighter. The reason for that is because the rest of our makeup is so unnatural and intense that you kind of need to balance everything out. That's why don't be afraid to really get in there with any of the makeup processes that we've been doing. Because in the end, they can all kind of complement each other. And if something is a little too intense, you can always blend it out afterwards. Like what I did for my nose contour. Now, the makeup is done, grab your little tiefling ears, and let's get into the wig and costume. And that concludes the makeup transformation for Jester Lavore from Critical Role. Thank you so much for watching, I hope that this has helped you. And if you're not into Critical Role yet, I would like to invite you to their channel here on YouTube. The link is below or you can click the little eye icon above. Go ahead and watch this amazing cast tell these awesome stories. And honestly, this show saved my life in 2019. So it's totally worth a watch, especially if you're into Dungeons and & Dragons. And even if you're not, maybe this is the perfect time to get into it. Speaking of Dungeons & Dragons, I want to hear about your D&D character. Tell me about them in the comment section below. I play a character named Phaedrin. He's a gay half-elf rogue assassin who has a heartbreaking past, but he's really trying to do better for his future. That's all I can really say about him, but I can't wait to hear about your characters. By the way, here's a dice bag that I made. They're hand-painted custom designs, and they have multiple pockets inside. By the time that this video is out, I'm not sure if I'm selling these or not, so please check in the description below for any updates. And that's it! If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel for more, and may the traveler be with you!